E2D is an improvement upon the E2C. The E2C, uh, or the Hawkeye, is the uh, kind of the quarterback of the air wing. So it's the eyes and ears. Um, there's always one airborne anytime there's aircraft airborne from the aircraft carrier. Uh, and, and we use basically uh, the radar to see uh, as far as we can around the carrier and then uh, all of our, our communication suites communicate both with the ships in the battle group and the aircraft that are airborne. From the ground up it's a brand new aircraft with new uh, radios, new data links, but really the centerpiece is the new uh, APY-9 radar which is uh, got a uh, significantly longer range in the E2C, and it's also uh, viable against uh, all current and future uh, manned aircraft and cruise missile threats. On the outside, there's only two things that have changed. There's a, you know, a cooling scoop that got a little bit bigger and a SATCOM antenna that became a flush mount, and otherwise it looks the same on the outside. But on the inside, everything is new. So new radar, new electronics, new computers, new uh, interface for uh, everybody to use, including adding in uh, a capability for the cockpit to control the mission system as well. The E2D radar is a two-generational leap in technology to provide a much better capability to see smaller targets at longer ranges than we've ever seen before from a carrier-based uh, organization or any other uh, platform. So no matter where we go in the world, whether it's carrier-based or shore-based, it brings a capability that nobody else has. By us protecting the strike group, and also providing situational awareness to the fighters, to the ships, it enables us to put our carrier strike group anywhere we want without being in jeopardy of being engaged by hostile forces. The most beneficial thing about the E2D is over its predecessors, it's much more versatile. So the days of, hey, I have an airplane that can do some things, but not everything, this is kind of a jack of all trades. So it does have a very capable radar, but it also has the ability through data links and other things to take that information and pass it to other entities and be a central node in the strike group no matter where we go. We need to know what's out there. So if we're going in for, it, whether it's a humanitarian effort, um, you know, we can serve as a mobile air traffic control, uh, so to speak. So if there's a disaster where all the elect uh, electricity and the infrastructure gets knocked out, we can serve as mobile infrastructure and direct a rescue effort. We've done that uh, most recently uh, in, uh, in Japan for the tsunami effort. So this aircraft is, is designed to work in all uh, overland environments, near land, uh, counter the more advanced threats, and also uh, the way it's designed an open architecture where we can quickly uh, add on capabilities or improve capabilities without having to tear apart the entire aircraft. You need someone to be, to know who's who in the zoo. So you need to know who every, which, every aircraft that's out there, who they are, where they're going, what they're doing, and uh, so that someone says, hey, who's this airplane I detect 10 feet or 10 miles off my nose? Is he one of ours? Is he going the right way? Or is this somebody I need to worry about? So that's, uh, that's our job. So as the face of warfare is changing, the, the mission of the E-2 is continuing to change. With this radar and this, this aircraft designed to be a game changer, no matter where we go in the world, is really what makes this airplane unique. Because of the increased demand for this aircraft, because of its increased capabilities, uh, the desire is to have five of them in each squadron. So you'll get a fifth aircraft into each squadron, which means a fifth E2D on every aircraft carrier. And then, uh, but they're doing that with the same number of people. The, uh, the increased reliability of the components, um, and then the combined with the aircraft being able to tell you what's wrong with it, uh, they're able to maintain five aircraft with the same number of people that they can maintain four aircraft with right now. Uh, and then the next thing to come to it will be in-flight refueling. So once we're on the aircraft carrier, we'll want to stay airborne longer. So there's a follow-on program to add uh, an in-flight refueling probe to the E2D, uh, which we'll be testing in the upcoming years and uh, pushing that capability out to the fleet. I'm hoping that you know five years from now, people will look back and say the E2D is the standard by which we measure capability excellence within, within the Navy. You know, we've got the Joint Strike Fighter, we've got the Super Hornet, and we've got the E2D that are pretty much the face of the air wings going forward. So I hope that people will look at this airplane and say, hey, you know what, it was designed to be something really good, but it's even better than we thought it would be. It is the game changer that the Navy bought.